This video is on IPv4 versus IPv6. Internet Protocol version 4 and 6 are used to route and address packets for networking devices. IPv6 was made to replace IPv4. IPv4 uses 32-bit address scheme allowing to store 2 to the 32 power addresses, meaning about 4.3 billion addresses. But we started running out of addresses thanks to technological advancements, which resulted in IPv6, which is a 128-bit address scheme. IPv4 are numeric and its binary bits are separated by a dot, while IPv6 is alphanumeric, where binary bits are separated by a colon and also contains hexadecimal. Let's look at the casting or communication differences between the two, starting with IPv4, which has unicast, broadcast, and multicast. First we have unicast. With unicast address, a single address is specified. Data sent with unicast addressing is delivered to a specific node identified by the address. It is basically point-to-point -point or one-to-one -one address link. Next, we have multicast or multicasting. It is a mechanism by which groups of network devices can send and receive data between the members of the group at one time, one to many, instead of separately sending messages to each device in the group. Multicasting grouping is established by configuring each device with same multicast IP address. In a multicast IP network, the content sender only needs to deliver a single stream, and the nodes along that network will replicate the stream across the entire network. Any IP packet sent to a multicast address is delivered to only those hosts that have joined that particular IP multicast group, resulting in less traffic, thereby reducing bandwidth and network overhead. If the host hasn't joined the group, the receiver ignores the packets at the hardware level, eliminating platform software resource consumption in that network element. There's two types of broadcast, limited and directed. In a limited broadcast, the data reaches from a source to all hosts in the same network. In directed broadcast, a host in one network sends a message to all hosts in another network. Now let's look at IPv6. IPv6 took out broadcast and added anycast. Anycast is also known as IP anycast or anycast routing. It is a IP network addressing scheme that allows for multiple servers to share the same IP address, allowing for multiple physical destination servers to be logically identified by a single IP address. Based on the location of the user's request, the Anycast router sends it to the server in the network based on the least cost analysis that includes the assessing of the number of hops, shortest distance, lowest transit cost, and minimum latency measurements to optimize the selection of a destination server. Multicast has the same concept in IPv4 and IPv6, but in IPv6, it has a signed and solicited node. In IPv6, for every multicast address that host has, it must join a solicited known multicast group, which represents the address that's valid only within the local link. And with IPv6, it starts off with FF something. When you enable IPv6 on an interface, it causes router to create link local IPv6 address. It will also compute and join the solicited node multicast group address. A solicited node address is basically created by taking the least significant 24 bits of a unicast or any cast address and appending them to the prefix FF02. Then we have the assigned multicast addresses, which are reserved multicast addresses for predefined groups of devices. An assigned multicast address is a single address used to reach a group of devices running a common protocol or service. Assigned multicast addresses are used in context with specific protocols such as DHCP version 6. Now let's talk about link local on the unicast for IPv6 since this will be covered in the network plus exam. Link local addresses have a prefix of FE80. IPv6 link local addresses are used by devices for communicating with other nodes on the same link. Link local IPv6 addresses have smaller scope as to how far they can travel, only within a network segment that a host is connected to. Routers will not forward packets destined to a link local address to other links. A link local IPv6 address must be assigned to every network interface on which the IPv6 protocol is enabled. A host can automatically derive its own link local IP address or the address can be manually configured. So how do we get IPv6 address? An extended unique identifier EOI allows a host to assign itself a unique 64-bit IPv6 interface identifier. This feature is a key benefit over IPv4 because it eliminates the need for manual configuration or DHCP as in the world of IPv4.
EOI64 is a method you can use to automatically configure IPv6 host addresses. An IPv6 device will use the MAC address of its interface to generate a unique 64 interface ID. A MAC address is 48-bit and the interface ID is 64-bit. So to make it a 64-bit from 48, we take the MAC address and split it into two pieces and insert FFFE in between two pieces so that we have 64-bit value. And lastly, invert the seventh bit of the interface ID. IPv4 on the other hand uses DHCP, but there's also automatic private IP addressing. It's a feature in an operating system that can give itself an IP address if it is incapable of receiving an address dynamically from a DHCP. Basically, it enables computers to automatically self-configure IP address and subnet mask when their DHCP server isn't reachable. When a DHCP client boots up, it looks for DHCP in order to obtain network parameters. If the client can communicate with the DHCP server, it uses IPPA automatic private IP addressing to configure itself an IP address from the IPPA range. This way, hosts will still be able to communicate with other hosts on the local network segment that are also configured for IPPA. However, it doesn't configure the system with default gateway address. As a result, communication is limited to only the local area network. A PIPA service also checks regularly for the presence of DHCP server, so that if it detects a DHCP server on the network, the DHCP server replaces the APIPA networking addresses with dynamically assigned addresses. APIPA assigns the system an address of 169.254.0.0 address range and configures an appropriate subnet mask of 255.255.00. Last two terms I want to talk about are loopback address and default gateway, which are covered in the Network Plus exam. A loopback address is a special IP address that is configured in the OS with no hardware associated with it. A loopback address has been built into the IP domain system in order to allow for a device to send and receive its own data packets. It's useful in various kinds of analysis like testing, debugging, or in allowing routers to communicate in specific ways. If a network client program sends a packet to loopback address, the OS routes the packet back to the user space. IPv4 loopback address is 127.0.0.1. The domain name is localhost. For IPv6, the loopback address is colon colon 1, and the domain name is localhost as well. Then we have default gateways. Default gateways are means by which the device can access hosts on other networks for which it does not have a specifically configured route. Morse workstation configuration default to using a default gateways rather than having any static routes configured. When a system wants to communicate with another device, it has to determine whether the host is on local or remote. If the host is on remote, the system looks in the routing table to determine whether it has an entry for the network on which the remote host resides. If it does, it uses that route. If it does not, the data is sent to that default gateway. In essence, default gateway is simply path out of the network for a given device. I'd like to lastly note that IPv6 supports dual stack. This means that both IPv4 and IPv6 can run on the same network. It allows for smooth transition from one to another during the adoption and deployment phases. It also enables network to continue to support legacy systems that may not be able to transition until sunset of those legacy systems.